It's Friday, obviously, and I also have to thank Kurt and Laura, who are my personal outfitters. Uh, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I had a couple comments this week, and I've addressed this before, but I've decided to attempt to prove a point. And so, for instance, I've told the story uh, several times now about how people want to argue with my hypotheticals. I'll give a hypothetical situation and I'll say, let's assume the following things are true and this happens. And people will go, well, that's, that, that, that's not true though. Or this over here, what have you... And so I've talked before several times about the hypothetical, about the police officer on the porch who looks in a window and sees a machine gun. And in the video I did recently on this channel, it was a rerun, but it was, it was a video I did... I explained how that hypothetical, you don't argue with the facts of the hypothetical. And then I gave the example about the guy in law school who went off on a tangent about PVC. In response to that video yesterday, a guy posted a thing. He goes, well, Steve, it does depend on the type of, type of machine gun. See? And so I know some people think they're being funny by saying things like that, but, but this person I'm pretty sure was serious about that. And so despite the fact that I said, don't argue with a hypothetical like this, or you'll look like this guy in law school who did this, the guy responds by arguing with a hypothetical, which to me is just so bizarre. But then the sad part was I did the video earlier that I ran the one about where the guy in traffic flipped out on me and pulled a gun on me. I had someone respond to that and go, well, Steve, if he thought you committed a crime, he was within his rights to attempt a citizen's arrest. And I was going to tell the guy, you need to go watch my video about changing the facts of my hypotheticals. And I realized it wasn't a hypothetical. It was a true story. And number one, it's not if you think someone committed a crime, you can arrest them. Number two, I hadn't committed a crime. Number three, no one mentioned a citizen's arrest. Like you... <laughs> It's one thing to change the facts of a hypothetical. It's another to try to change the facts of a true story. You realize that if the guy had gotten out of that van and had been Jimmy Hoffa, I would have solved the crime of the century in Michigan. Imagine that. If, if the person who jumped out of that van was Amelia Earhart, I would have solved the mystery of the previous century. I mean, we... Why do people feel compelled to just make up weird twists and stuff and say, well... The guy was trying to arrest you, a citizen's arrest, obviously. So I decided that this is going to be it. This, this. <laughs> let this be our last battlefield. No, let. <laughs> this is going to be my last argument about this. I am so sick of this. But I, I honestly think some people don't understand what I'm getting at here. So I am baffled as to how people who think that way got out of school, meaning how'd they get into school and graduate? I'm being deadly serious here, okay? So I went on the internet and I pulled a first grade math problem. I actually typed in, I need an example of a story problem for first grade math, okay? Now, I'm going to read you the story tell you what I think the answer is, but then I'm going to show you how these people think who cannot understand hypotheticals. Okay? First grade math story problem. Billy had two books at home. He went to the library to take out two more books. He then bought one book. How many books does Billy have now? Now, see, here's the thing. They want you to think the answer is five. If you look the answer up, they'll tell you it's five. Because he has two, he takes out two more, and he buys one. He now has five books. No, 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 no. That's, see, that's not how the internet works, okay? Do you want to know what the answer to that is? We really don't know, and I'll explain to you why. See, it says your Billy had two books at home. Had is past tense implying that something may have happened to those books when he left the home to go get the other books. So we don't know that he actually had two books at the end of the story when it says, how many does he have now? Okay? So to assume that those two books stayed there and remained two books is something we can't do. 
Billy had two books at home. How long ago? We don't know that. Second of all, he went to the library to take out two more books. He went there to take out. That implies that his intent was to take out two books. It didn't say he did take out two books. He meant to. He intended to. He hoped to. He might have. But it didn't say that he did. He went to the library to take out two more books. Once there, his books might not have been there. The library may have been closed. When he got there, they may have said, Billy, you need a library card. You haven't got one. Billy, your mother checks out your books because you're just in first grade. So we don't know that he actually got any books out of the library. And it says he went to the library. All we know is that he got there. We don't know that he took out any books. So his intent to take out two more books is actually irrelevant. So we know that he had two books at home at one time and then went to the library and did God knows what, because it doesn't say what he did when he got there. It says that he went there to take out books. But did he? We don't know. And by the way, he may have gone there and returned a book. Maybe the two books that he had at home, he brought with him to the library and returned them and then changed his mind about taking out two books. So now he could have, instead of four books, zero books. Because the two at home go to the library, boom. Right? I mean, it doesn't say he went to the library and took out two more books. He went there to take out two books. It then says... He then bought one book. Where did he buy this book from? Where did the money come from to buy that book? But beyond that, he bought one book. Did he potentially steal any books while he was there? What What if he got two books that were stuck together? What if it was buy one, get one free? So he bought one, but he got one for free. So he could have had two books at home, returned them to the library after changing his mind, and then he could have then bought two books but paid for one. So the possibility here is we don't know. We have no clue as to how many books he has now. So the question here says, how many books does Billy have now? Well, when did this all happen, by the way? Because if Billy had two books at home in 1964 and he went to the library in 1969 to take out two more books and then he bought a book in 1975, how many books does he have? I don't know. Is that really his only interactions with books during those years? Because I can tell you right now that there was a time in my life when I had two books at home. See, he had two books at home. It doesn't say he had two and only two books at home. He had two books means he has at least two books at home. So he might have 2,000 books. And the answer to the question, but does he have two? Yes, he does. Pick any two among those 2,000 books. So we don't know the time frame. We don't know actually how many books he has at home total. We We don't know what he accomplished when he went to the library. He may have intended to take out two books. We don't know if he figured that, you know, actually did that or not. And then he bought one book. But we also don't know. There might be other sources of books. I have people send me books all the time. I get books in the mail that I'm not expecting. I will literally go to my P.O. box, open it up, and there's a big, thick package. It's got a book in it. Are you telling me that nobody ever gives Billy books? Has his birthday or Christmas gone by during this story? What if this story took place right around his birthday and he told all his friends, I want books for my birthday? Okay. And by the way, how many books does Billy have? Does that mean how many does he own? Or how many is he in possession of? Because the question is, if Billy shares the house with family, siblings, and parents, are the books on the shelf 
in the hallway between his room and his parents' room? Are those books that he has? What if, what if he takes one of his books and puts it on that shelf? That's his book, right? What if his mom comes up and says, hey, Billy, you want to read this book? And he goes, yeah, but not today. And she goes, I'm going to put it on the shelf for you. Does he have that book? See, we don't know the answers to any of these questions, okay? So if you were in first grade right now thinking like the way most people apparently think on the internet, the question is four sentences long. Billy had two books at home. He went to the library to take out two more books, and then he bought one book. How many books does Billy have now? We've got no clue how many books he has, and that's a correct answer. <laughs> or, or maybe he's trying to make a citizen's arrest. Who knows? I am, I am seriously profoundly curious as to how the people who say things like, well, Steve, it still depends on what kind of machine gun it is. How did you get through first grade? Seriously. You didn't understand the question? And by the way, I actually, and I don't remember now if it was in a live stream or in a video, and I apologize, but I'm going to tell it again. Okay? In the original story, I was trying to give an example of plain view. I said there's a cop on a porch, looks in a window, sees a machine gun laying on a table. People got bent out of shape, apparently, because I mentioned that it was a machine gun and not a widget. If I said widget, nobody would have cared. But for some odd reasons, people out there knee-jerk react to the fact that I'm talking about something that's near and dear to their hearts. And I've had people say, but Steve, you cannot come up with a hypothetical whereby that police officer could act upon that information. Yes, I can. Seriously? So let me give you an example. And again, it's a hypothetical, so I can make up my own facts, right? There you go. So there's a museum in a town, World War II Museum. World War II Museum's got all kinds of artifacts in it from World War II. And it has in there a thing called an MG42. And the guys who are bent out of shape by this know what I'm talking about. It's a very, very specific kind of weapon used in World War II by the Germans. And uh, it features prominently a couple scenes in Saving Private Ryan. So the MG42 is in this museum. They've got one. They've got one in the museum. It's got signs all over it going, German machine gun, MG42, as seen in Private Ryan. There it is, right there. It's, got, it's written down the side, MG42, German machine gun. The sign says it. The arrow's pointing at it. Say it. In fact, the museum is actually a German machine gun museum in America. Okay? It's my fact pattern. I can make this stuff up. So one day, there is a law enforcement convention that decides to pay a visit to this museum and take a look at the cool stuff they got there. Okay? So 12 police officers are walking through the museum. And they come upon the MG42 display. And there's the MG42 right there, right there. Signs on it. It's even painted on the side of the gun, MG42. German machine gun. A guy comes in, not aware of the fact that there's law enforcement officers all around. He's kind of dizzy. And he runs over, grabs it, picks it up, and starts running away with it. Okay? Somebody yells, stop, thief, he stole our machine gun. And it just so happens that a dozen police officers saw it happen. They see the guy running off with the gun, and it still says machine gun down the side. So they chase him. They never lose sight of him, and they never lose sight of the gun. He runs out of the building, down the street, across the street. Again, they've got his thing right in their vision the entire time. And he, and he realizes he's being chased now. So he speeds up, and he runs up to his house. The door is open to his house. He goes in, kicks the door shut with his heel. And as the police officers walk up his porch, chasing him, they see him lay it on the coffee table and run away so they see the gun plain view they're legally on his porch and they actually witnessed the crime taking place and they saw the entire transaction do they know that's a machine gun if you dare say no to that <laughs> for anything other than ironic purposes 
I know what you're going to say. Steve, you made those facts up. Of course I did. As a law school professor, I made up facts all the time. Every, every final exam I gave was made up facts. I'm here to tell you right now that I'd have a student every semester who would circle a fact and try to change it and go, but what if this? I didn't ask you what if this. I said, what about this? And the interesting thing is that the people who tried to change the facts almost always got the answer wrong because they didn't understand the question. And the ironic thing about that is that the vast majority of the people understood the questions, could read them fine. There are people out there who simply want to argue with everything, especially when it's a topic that they find sensitive. So for whatever reason, when I said there's a cop on the front porch, he looks in the window, sees a gun, and he, and, and he realizes it's a machine gun and, you know, plain view. I was simply making the point about the plain view. And everybody wants to argue with, oh, you can't tell it's a machine gun by looking at it. Well, I didn't go into those facts, did I? But with the facts I gave you a few minutes ago, yeah, you could tell. Yeah, it said right down the side it's a machine gun. <laughs> Came from the machine gun museum down the street. People were yelling, stop that man, he stole our machine gun. And they saw the guy carrying it, put it down. It's a machine gun. You, you argue all you want, but you, you know, it's like arguing with gravity. I can't jump off a building and go, well, I don't buy this gravity business. Can I talk to Mr. Newton about that? Oh, he passed away. Oh, that's too bad. So there you go. So I'm going to try to limit talking about this in the future. <laughs> but for those of you who ask, how come I don't respond to comments on my main channel anymore? <laughs> Primarily because I don't read them. There's too many comments like these on that channel. And by the way, the standard for a citizen's arrest is not if you think someone committed a crime. So if the guy thought I committed a crime, he cannot perform a citizen's arrest on me. Uh, in Michigan, you actually have to witness a felony, and then you might be able to perform a citizen's arrest. And what was the alleged felony that you made up in your mind about how the guy came running at me with a gun? I'm sorry. Oh, there isn't one, is there? I mean, there's not even a possible one, is there? So, yeah. But again, I just wanted to illustrate to you that the kind of logic that says that you can just go in and start changing and all this, it's, it's pointless. And um, I'm not really sure what it accomplishes, but there are people out there who simply want to argue with everything. So, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> if this changes anything, but I doubt it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.